this is part 3 of my Liu Biao video series, we are back to post recording commentary as I had more microphone problems, however I do now have a brand new microphone so those should be a thing of the past. Catching up with where we left off, we have a small skirmish outside of Jianling, we are seeing Liu Chang has finally made his move for us while we conquered Seven Jing in the last video with uh, Zhuge Liang's crack team of city sieges. Wu Ling has been partially built up, Changsha and Gui Yuang have been fully built up, and Ling Ling will now be developed. By the end of this video, we will have a fully self-sufficient Seven Jing, which will be able to act as our breadbasket, supplying our frontline forces. Chai Sang, of course, slowly building up in the background there. Sun Chuan and Cao Cao are skirmishing. What happens here? Um, Cao Cao will often deploy Tu Jin Yi from... Ah, oh, I forget the name of that city. Um, Chen Deng used to be the governor of it. Um, anyway, Cao Cao deploys for that city and he often uh, changes his mind after taking a single core as the overextended supply line without the security of the port is easy for um, Sun Chuan to take out. Otherwise here we are looking at a very sort of mediocre and easy to handle attack force so we've got a very unoptimized force of just Wei Yan and Sai Mao. They will have no problem at all holding off this um, lacklustre attack force from Liu Chang. Compared to the forces we've had attacking us in Jin Yi over the past video and throughout this video, I am sure, um, there's nothing to worry about. Because like ourselves, Liu Chang has the Confucian doctrine, but unlike ourselves, doesn't have the scholar traits rapidly ranking it up, and he doesn't have the officers to really make the most of it. Uh, he has a very weak force, he has low maximum morale, he, morale, he doesn't have high fish um, fish formation officers, uh, policy doctrine officers that give full fish formation boosts. I'm uh, pointing out here, picking up a few of the few officers we captured in the last video, we do have another summoner here, uh, which are always worth picking up, and here we have Zhu Sheng. So Zhu Sheng, much like Li Yan and Wen Pin that you've seen me use in the uh, the past two videos defending Jiangxia. He has the defense trait. Notably, he also has Courageous, which is the trait we've been making use of with uh, Chao Yun to great effect. So 3,000 troops are last. He's, even, he's an even stronger frontline officer. He has good overall stats. And he has a unique tactic that does quite a bit of damage. And also Helmsman, which helps as well. So overall, he's a pretty good officer that's only mitigated by his lackluster confidence only having Ding Feng. But if you arrange a sworn brotherhood with Zhu Shang, which I think I might make another video going into further detail about making confidants where you lack them, um, he has potential to be very, very good and um, I'm sure we'll be able to make use of him. So, um, aside from that, we're just going to start this um, this video off hiring everyone that we just acquired and captured in our prisons, checking up on the development of Wu Ling as we want to get this um, fully developed up as quickly as possible. All of our famous officers, that is our officers with the famous trait, are situated there to build up the maximum amount of cores in the quickest amount of time. And I will... Um, I have plans for Ling Ling. You can see here uh, the mountainous path from Ling Ling to Jiao Qi. You take a huge hit of morale moving from Ling Ling to Jiao Qi and it takes a great deal number of turns. So if you are deploying with a large force you are simply going to run out of supplies and end up outside Jiao Qi with low morale and quite possibly starving. It's a very expensive endeavour, but there are ways around this, so um, keep that in mind as we'll approach that later on. So just checking out on Chai Sang, that's um, being developed. Jiangxia is uh, our border city against Lu Jiang. Quite easy to defend. 
It's a very poor city, it doesn't generate a lot for us, other than it being a frontier against Cao Cao. It relieves a little bit of this pressure off of Jin Yi. If we lost Jiang Xia, Jin Yi would be facing attack from four different directions at once. And again, looking at our, our administration here, you can see we are very well developed. And I decide, you know, we'd promote areas and um, promote, prepare register at max rank, meaning we're recruiting the most troops and developing our city at the fastest capacity. We might as well um, give give some scheming a try. And I think here, in particular in Jinyi, that there are some hills, there are some mountains, and I can try building some uh, hilltop arrow towers to slow down a future attack by Sao Sao, which will allow me to defend from Wan, first of all. And Sao Sao always does the simultaneous three-pronged attack, so I can defend from Wan, shift over my troops to Xu Chang, Runan, and the arrow towers will call, have caused a significant delay. So that's what we're doing here. As for uh, Jianling, I think we're just going to watch this play out. Now with our, of course, our advisor Zhu Gu Liang, we are always going to make the right move in terms of hiring people thanks to the in in uh, 100 intelligence path. So you can see Sai Mao and Wei Yan making very short work of Lei Tong. And Wu Yi there, who is um, an officer I'd very much like to acquire, is starting to retreat. And we've just walked into a trap uh, with Liu Hua, so my attempts to cut off Yi Ling are probably not going to work. But I think we just saw um, Jiang Wan spawn. So if we take a quick look at him. So um, regarding Jiang Wan, if you play this scenario and you don't take Xin Yi and you allow it to fall to Cao Cao, he becomes one of your essential officers. He's got good overall stats, he's another high intelligence officer, he's got a good combination of traits, 50, 50 I should say, and reduces the, the supply, supply of, uh, well actually reduces the consumption of supply, so you don't eat as much food, your calm and feigned mirror, feigned mirror trait, reduce the effects of disorder for yourself and your surrounding officers. You have Helmsman, which is um, surprisingly useful and lacking in the Southern Jing officers, especially when Sai Mao dies, Zhang Yun already having died. But he is also a friend of Zhu Ge Liang, so he is one of those officers you will pair with Zhu Ge Liang when you're trying to make an army centred around buffing Zhu Ge Liang up as strong as you can. So I think um, at this point we're still concentrating a little bit on domestics, hiring who we can, building up the provinces, juggling the officers around to make sure all the cores have people defending them. And I'm going to try and, um, well, with Lei Tang eliminate to try and pursue Liu Chang all the way back to Yong An. Well, so I'm just using any old officer here. Even with Jianling is lightly defended as it is, the only city threatening it at this stage is Yong'an of Liu Chang. So as long as I can defend there, I'm okay. And uh, skipping up to Jinyi. This is what I'm going to be doing. Building a few firing platforms, making a little bit of a ch choke point. They will not do much damage at all to Cao Cao's very, very strong units. They'll be deploying the 15, 17, 18,000 troops. They will have stats in the 1500s, but it'll delay them, which will allow me to defend Wan and I'll be okay. So I think Wu Yi is starting to retreat. At least uh, his buddy over there is, but Wei Yan heading first, head first into danger, and Liu Pan surrounding, going around the river to flank him off. We've got nothing to worry about. So 
try and get Liu wide there for the cutoff. Continuing to spend all of my gold on hiring, rewarding, recruiting, and then taking the opportunity to give everyone a much deserved promotion. So, I think at this point I start to look at shifting some of the officers around as I've got too many in Wuling and not enough elsewhere. And of course I've got my summoner officer here that I've just hired, Liu Xian, and I want to um, appoint him over to Changsha, which is a wealthy city but doesn't have a summoner. Um, Xian Yang and Jian Ling, both of summoners over um, re recruiting at this point. So between the three summoners now, I'm probably getting, I know, maybe 1,500 extra troops a turn. And there goes uh, Wu Yi. Wei Yan really popping off. That's his Annihilator trait in action, giving him more assault. The offensive version of defensive, or defense. And we're just going to clear up some of these fortifications at Liu Chang quite frustratingly likes to build. If you ever tried invading Shu from Hanzong into Zitong through the passes, you will be walking into tower, traps, forts. It's beyond frustrating. Yeah, so I think everything's in order. Xi'an Yang is pumping out troops at an extortionate rate. And Lu Meng's doing his thing up in Jinyi. Okay. Probably taking more damage from the fires that I've walked into than I am Liu Chang's officers, but there's Fa Chang. He's come to. Uh, I don't know what he's quite come to do. He's only 3,000 troops strong, and I do have 15,000 troops in the field, so um, he's probably come to die. Where I'm sandwiched between these forts that lower our uh, maneuverability, just making sure everyone moves into the right place. I'm just going to keep building these firing platforms. There we are, there's the summoner in Changsha. So, even more troops for the war effort. And we're all looking good, apart from Xin Yi running quite low on supplies, which I may not have noticed at this point. There we are, so exactly like a, as expected, Guanling, that's the name of that city. Sao Sao has taken one core province and has decided to uh, retreat. <sighs> ah, so Fa Cheng was on, you know, under order to build a narrow tower. That is not going to work out terribly well for him. And he's in ring formation. So an unbuffed, low morale, morale ring formation officer. He can't touch us. Oops, sorry, skipped too much. So as you can see there, his tactic doing 30 damage to Wei Yan. Far Chang has been donated to us. So I'm trying to surround him in hopes that I can catch him because Fa Cheng would be a nice addition. He's one of those officers where he's so-so in terms of how useful he is in the most circumstances, but he does has does have vantage ground, so he's better than most on the defensive. We are Lingling's getting there. Wuling is now all but fully developed. So 
So he goes south. Xi Chen. And we watch this uh, <laughs> failed march by Fa Cheng play out, and we've captured him. Now, Fa Cheng isn't the most loyal of officers to uh, Liu Chang, so there's a very good chance we can hire him. Okay, we treat everyone back. Now, I'm checking out San Chuan's forces here, as I wanted to see if Xiu Yu is still alive, and I think. He's got, yeah, so he's got, um, he has Wu Jun as Warlord, so I see that, and I think has Cho Yu died, because I'd quite like to hire Cho Yu if he's still alive by the time I'm in the position to take out Sun Chuan. Cho Yu is still going, and he's healthy, he's young, but he's one of those officers with a short lifespan. So I go into the events, I think I'm sure Cho Yu dies around now, and then uh, having a look, Death of Cho Yu, he, his event for dying, if you choose to manually trigger it, is in uh, December 2010, which obviously we won't be able to, as Liu Bei's force doesn't exist. However, Cho Yu won't live much longer beyond that, so um, if I want Cho Yu, I will have to conquer Sun Chuan fairly quickly, and I'll have to consider giving him my life extension item if Liu Biao hasn't consumed it as of yet. And we have another promotion to get the next rank up, which allows me an extra layer of adjudicant manual tactic control. I do need three provinces, however. So either all of Shu province or the province to the furthest south of the map where um, Jersey is located. Oh, there we are. Look at that. There goes... Um, there comes Chang Ren. So Zhu Cheng, I'm having just hired him by somebody in, in Chai Sang, I'm going to move him over to uh, Jianling, and I think he's going to uh, form part of the Jianling Defence Force. Yeah, so I'm just having a quick look if there's any, anything else I can do to get um, Chai Sang built up fast enough, and there's only so much. Slight optimizations, but I just have to leave it be mostly. And Jiang Sha, yep, no problems there. It's built up a little bit of gold, so I'm going to use that gold to purchase some supplies. In fact, I decide, I believe, yep, spend most of the gold. That'll keep Jiang Sha fed for the foreseeable future. I think at this point I see Xi'an Yi's a bit low on supplies, 30,000. Here we are, just moving things around a little bit, seeing if I, think, if I can get Xi'an Yi promoted up to medium city. Lu Meng's done his job there. Liu Hua has walked into another trap and Chang Ren is coming to uh, try and capture him so I'm going to hope he escapes there. He's not a particularly important officer but you know an officer's an officer. There we are, Fa, Fa Cheng and Lei Tong. Fa Cheng doesn't join us, Lei Tong does straight away. But Fa Cheng's already down to 95 loyalty so he's as good as ours. <laughs> and Liu Hua gets out of there. So we have but Liu Chang's two best officers coming for us, Wu Yi and, Li, and uh, Jiang Ren. So, a little bit of promoting here, I think I just auto-promote. Getting lazy, but we have, enough, we have enough free titles now that I can really do that. And then, uh, ooh, oh yeah, who am I looking for here? Zhu Sheng, but I can't give him a title because he's out in the field, re relocating from Chai Sang to Jianling. So here I'm looking at uh, a potential defensive force, even though these are Liu Chang's best officers, they're not 
particularly scary. So I think way on Saima, like before, Liu Pan perhaps in the ocean, going for a little swim with his boaties. It'll do. Do I keep Liu Pan in fish formation, in arrow formation? That seems very bold. I guess I do. I think I probably wanted him to have arrow formation for the quick uh, flank around. And as he's been doing quite well, we give Wei Yan the uh, manual tactic. God, what a horrible portrait for Yang Yi. And he was quite a significant officer in late, well, not later. So he's age of the Chu Go Liang Chancellor period of Xu Huan. Mm -hmm. There we are. I guess you see Fast Fa Cheng joining us. Liu Chang loves building fortifications. And I'm still getting invites for a coalition against Cao Cao, but. I'm at war with San Juan. I'm at war with Liu Chang. I don't really see the purpose of the coalition. So I'm weighing up. Do I go for the cutoff here? I may very well do. I think, let's have a look. yeah, Xu Sheng's arrived. I think I decide to give him a title. That being said, with three thousand troops, well, with courageous, three thousand troops is more than more than enough for him. I weigh up giving him arrow because arrow and defense is actually quite a good combination is the biggest um, shortfall of arrow formation is you take a lot of damage so it mitigates that somewhat but still because of the multiplicative properties of many of these buffs fish is the way to go there we are 1200 defense no buffs no bonuses If I had Arrow Formation Doctrine Policy appointed, maybe I would consider Arrow, but for now... Do I go? Yeah, I'd go with Fish. Here we are, so, and Liu Pan doesn't quite get the manoeuvre off. Yes he does, does he? No, one more turn. It did take 2,000 <laughs> 2, damage before uh, getting in position. But the cavalry are awful in this game, it's uh, really unfortunate. In all other, well, in at least the Three Kingdoms games since um, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 11, cavalry have been um, well, always the strongest units, and I think even historically um, a powerful cavalry force was um, unrivaled but not in this game there we are so we've got Zhang Ren captured and then provoke Wu Yi taking his time ah leaving poor Zhang Ren to his fate And as we've just defeated Wu Yi in the field not long ago, you might actually still be wounded. That 1400 assaults with no buffs other than being in uh, a territory with um, lots of adjacent cores. Okay, there, there he goes. Don't walk into the fire, anyone. Ooh, look at that damage. So we can't um, tolerate that for too much longer. Uh, 
but Liu Chang is now drastically outnumbered and even outmanned in terms of the quality. Oh no, he's trying to get away, and he might actually have done it. And into it, he's baited me into a trap. That's actually unintentional by the AI, I'm sure, but quite clever for um, Wuyi to bait us into the pitfall like that while continuing to pepper us with arrows. But not to worry, we will um, continue our march forward. We are going to demolish every construct in our way. No more traps, no more pitfalls, no more um, fire traps. I think if we take a quick peek south, I built up quite a few supplies here, intentionally, and I'm transporting them over to uh, Ling Ling. Same with Gui Yang. And I think even yep, yeah, even the same over here. So we've got plenty of. Supplies coming our way. <laughs> Jiani, yet again, this looks familiar. Deja vu. Wei's best officers marching down to Jurong and then retreating because they haven't got a, a port nearby. So Xin Yi back to full strength. Because I have a, a surplus of wounded officers. The city is naturally building itself back up to max capacity, even without me supplying troops regularly. And at this point, Cao Cao simply can't take Xin Yi with these officers stationed here. Though my supply income is uh, hefty compared to uh, the supplies the city generates, so I am constantly having to send Wang Yi off, yes, or Yang Yi off to feed food into uh, Xin Yi. And Ganshi is dying, which is unfortunate because she's one of my few supportive officers. Han Sang, uh, <laughs> not going to hold too many tears for him. Ling Ling is built up. At least, so that was um, in part sending my famous officers down south here. So, Seven Jing is all ready to go. Ganshi, I'm looking and I'm thinking, hmm, it sucks. And I also have the choice um, do I allow Ma Teng to die, which weakens Ma Chao's force? And I figured, no, let's keep Ma Teng going. It won't make a huge deal to us, but I mean, what I could, I know Chang Lu's already dead, but what you can do is always have uh, March carry out those event chains, have March out join Chang Lu as an officer, and then take Chang Lu to in order to acquire March out without having to go all the way up to the northwest. But no, I'll just leave them, um, leave them be. And here we are, we're building a few fortifications of our own. And Liu Chang is once again deploying for us. Significantly smaller force, that being said, but... He will not give up. What am I looking at here? Oh, I, I think... Just get Wei Yan in position and brute force it. Okay, so Ling Ling. Are we ready? There we are. I moved all the famous officers down south and forgot to reappoint the cores, um, naturally. But in oh, what's a period of about five months since the video started, Ling Ling is 
completely under our control. Reasonable result all, all, all around. So, okay, I won't, be, won't spend all of our food, but we will all of our gold on food. In fact, it's probably not even necessary. So, 22,000 in the city, 34,000 in Jiaochi. And I'm way. Look at that, all high mountains, if you can see in the bottom right. And I'm weighing up. Do I risk it? Because. If I'm going to go for Jiaochi, I will have to send a very small force. And not only that, but Ganshi could die at any time and that would weaken our force tremendously as we'd lose the supportive trait. So, to call it risky is an understatement. But, I want to expand. And it's a, Jian Yi could collapse at any time. So I am giving it a huge amount of thought. And there we go, Doing very well. And then comes Wu Yi. Four thousand damage to him as he was already wounded with low strength. And Jin Yi is now a medium city. So even though we're going to lose a few troops to fire, which is always frustrating, we've actually done reasonably well here. Xu Sheng and Wei Yan actually work quite well together in the sense that one's the defensive officer, one's the offensive officer. Not quite hammer and anvil, but not uh, entirely dissimilar in concept. I think all is well for now. And is this when we go for it? Yes, it is. So. Wang Zhan, of course, is the best city assaulting officer in the game. So he'll be coming along. And then there's Zhu Goliang, Pang Tong, and Zhu Xu for the synergy. And you can see here, Jugo Leong, very much likes everyone that's coming along with us. Wait, no, am I taking Huang Zhong? Do I leave him home? I leave... No, that's it. I've clicked Jai and Wan. Just to see if he did um, get along with anyone, but he doesn't. Just Jugo Leong. So if you made Jai and Wan confidant with Pang Tong and Zhu Xu, um, you would have perfect synergy between the four of them. So that is, again, another candidate worth considering. He has to be with your force for a whole year before you can make him a confidant, though. So it's something to consider for later on. Okay, so I'm deploying 3,000 at a time. These officers, very, very small units, considering the city I'm attacking is quite fully developed. But... And you can see here, 121 days for Zhu Guoliang to arrive. That's 13 turns. So there's no turning around. If you realize halfway through that journey you've made a mistake, um, you, know, you have to commit. So I hesitate, I think, do I go for it? Is this, am I throwing away a year? And God knows how many troops, and on I go for it. So we're deploying 14,000 troops against a city that has 34,000 in it. So, uh, and on veteran difficulty nonetheless. I check, make sure he doesn't want to doesn't want to surrender to me before I do it. Sack Chang Lu doesn't want to surrender. San Quan doesn't want to surrender. Martin doesn't want to surrender. So all right, there we are. Who needs diplomacy? Ah, Iron Wall is always annoying. Get move Wei Yan out of the file. Far Cheng was going to get some action, but it looks like... Oh yeah, two. 
Liu Chang reinforced Yong An, so there's still a healthy, uh, healthy amount of troops there. And way up, do I want to uh, develop Beijing, sneak it, uh, build a few towers around it? Uh, do I go for that? It's a bit. I'm risking a full frontal assault if I do that, so I think I just uh, leave it be. And there we are, so we're in February, February, they've all been deployed, they're on their long march south. And just note they are at full morale at this point, so 122, 123, nearly full morale. Oof, I think I've walked into a fire trap, it's <laughs> which would... Uh... Yeah, I've walked into a fire trap, which is frustrating. So, Xu Sheng's quite weak. Here comes Chang Ren and Wu Yi yet again. So, I need to pull back a little bit. Another 17,000 troops. I can definitely win this skirmish. And if I win this skirmish, I'm in a very good position to start seriously looking at taking Yong An. But for now... I just pull on back. And I can see, you can see here, I just go back a little bit. Jiangzhou, 6,000 troops. Chengdu, 13,000 troops. If I break in through Yong'an, all of Liu Chang's troops are in Zitong, the uh, frontier against Cao Cao. So I will be able to sweep in and take city after city in quick, quick succession as long as I can break in through Yong'an and down the mountain pass. Thinking here, do I look to reinforce? Am I sending Liu Pan out? I have an idea here apparently. Who am I looking for? Oh, Liu Pan. I think I'm just going to improve him slightly. Give him a surprise attack. And... Rally? For the assault buff. Yes. I think. There we are. Rally it was. So Sai Mao and Li Pan. In fact, I then see Sai Mao's tactics, which are quite disappointing, and I think I realise... Nope. I can improve this. Sai Mao, decent intelligence. He can have disorder. Oh, of course, give him the ever naval tactic as well, which he's shockingly missing out on. But give him disorder. So these two can now deploy. And off we go, down the river. Both with helmsmen, so both able to reinforce in quite quick succession. And I think at this point, we, yeah, we've Ling Ling built up. I send my famous officers over to Chai Sang to uh, get that city up and running as well. Okay. Okay, we're in position. I just need to move Fa Cheng over one step or two steps and we're good to go. Well, my would note, in fact, I put, decide to play a bit defensively and pull back a little bit. Get into more favourable terrain. Try to lure, lure in um, Jiang Ren and Wu Yi so we can potentially cut them off with the flank. We're halfway through March. OK, 
Okay, Wei Yan's unit is a lot weaker now, so we're only doing 2,000 damage versus the 4,000 before. Wu Yi may have also recovered from his wound. And here, we, here comes Sai Mao, storming up the river. Okay, try and burn, burn down Chang Ren's unit. I think I decided against it in case I set fire to Wei Yan, as he's not got many troops left. And we have another full frontal assault from Cao Cao. There's 50,000 troops here. Not far off. 20,000 from Wan. And a casual um, 25,000 from Runan. Nearly 100,000 troops. And then Yu Jin, all by himself, heading towards Chai Sang. So one of these is a potential threat. Uh, one of these most very much is not. So I think I decide just to... Uh, just to ignore... Well, not ignore, but... Send them on autopilot. Leave you Jin for now. Make sure I'm not forgetting to hire anyone who might be rotting away in our prisons. And this you've now seen a few times. So I'm just setting these guys up. Zhao Yun is going to be in goose formation as once you have more than three fish formation officers you start to struggle to all get them in position. Mm -hmm. And of course given Zhao Yun range on his tactic is very helpful as well. So we're all setting up there. And now to our east, we got Wu Meng, Zhang He, the two ministrant officers, and the supportive wife. We've got two wives in uh, Jinyi for this very purpose. We got Xia Hushi, which is Zhang Fei's wife, and we got Mi Shi, which was one of Liu Bei's wives. So I think we can handle this quite comfortably. And then to the uh, slightly smaller scale skirmish. So Wei Yan against Zhang Ren, I'd expect Wei Yan to win that, which... Oh yeah, Zhang Ren's wounded, which he most definitely will. Will we capture Zhang Ren? No, but it will take a huge hit in morale, which limits the amount of damage he'll do to us. Now, Wei Yan is getting quite low, but Sai Mao comes in with the Clutch Disorder. So, up at Jin, oh no. I oh, haven't quite finished yet. I notice Wheeling has the, the icon indicating that a surround and conquer tactic can uh, take place. And I eye up all four provinces which are going to be flipped to my side if I activate that, sur that surround and conquer. So this gives me, gives me the, uh, the thought that... I might want to try and do that, even with all of my best quality officers elsewhere. We're not fighting a significant enemy here. So if we reinforce Jianling, as long as we have the numbers and we're able to brute force our way to that little core province, we can uh, surround the city. And uh, April, still not there yet, to the south. 
that won't be uh, changing anytime soon. So yeah, Chang Ren is wounded, he's confused, he's about to be surrounded. Really not his day. And of course, Up and Jin Yi were just getting information. Wu Meng with his 1400, 1400 stats with no confidants, just from having courageous two ministrants and a supportive officer. So that is the uh, power of the courageous trait. putting this much attention and care into setting up my formation in Jin Yi as I think we all know what's going to happen. Wu Yi acquired, at least he's in my prison. So this is a now a maximum, an immediate maximum royal hit for uh, Liu Chang's forces. Wei Yan's going to about 2,000, yeah 1,200 because this unit's so weak. Ah, oh, okay so this battle here 5,000 damage, 4,000 damage immediately from another chain tactic. Those tactics are just bouncing off of each other. And Sao Ren did two, he did six damage to us with his 15,000 troop unit before dying. Six. <laughs> 15,000 troops and they did six to us. So, um, Lee Dian is in his siege weapon gonna run away. And I think we retreat now. This isn't the uh, Grand Assault, no. Still on our way. So this should be okay, and... Jiao Jiang Xia down to 700 troops. Uh, that was uh, that was a disaster waiting to happen. Okay, so is Yu Jin going to make it? So our firing platforms here. So you do nine damage there, three damage. It's when the units are this big. It's just. Not really worth using, but they do slow the units down. Uh, I'm just checking, Lady Anne is moving back in, which she is. Eugene doing his normal things. Um, next turn we are. So for all purposes, um, it did allow me to get everyone back in the city. That Jiang Xia developed here, the medium city now. And there goes Eugene. I 
think I get a little nervous at this point that we have so few troops in the city and with Jiangxia now being a medium city I feel comfortable enough recruiting there. 1300 troops just from the what was a, a, a cash drain on us. Oh wait, whoa 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 whoa, I'm not gonna do that am I? Nope. Clicked one too many zeros. There we are, that's much, much more like it. So everyone's retreating back into place. We've got 10,000 reinforcements from the south, 10,000 reinforcements from the north, and soon I think I'm going to give that at least an attempt. And you can see here, with Wu Yi gone, all they have is developed. In fact, he probably didn't even have Wu Yi appointed in the first place. So, while well, his domestics are very good, he has slightly stronger goose formation officers, he has forts, but he just simply doesn't have enough morale to go toe to toe with us. So, Jiang Wan, I decided he can uh, participate in the assault on Yang'an. Get him out of the way. And um, here we go. Skipping the, uh, of course, the, de the deployment phases. There's only so many times you need to see this. Getting everyone into a tight box formation. Wumong just taking 800 damage. Wu Yi with 24 years service, his uh, loyalty is starting to drop. So the, I suppose the uh, one weakness of these um, courageous officers, only 3,000 troops, is that they are very weak to direct damage tactics. Wumong just took a thousand there from charge. So that's a third of his troops gone. Oh, 1700 assault from a goose formation, Zhao Yun. That is uh, painful. He wants Wu Yi back, and under no circumstances am I going to give Wu Yi back to him. Wu Meng is exchanging 500 uh, casualties for 20 casualties a tick, so... Ah, oh, here comes the, the spam of the tactics, 9k damage there. And there's another 8,000 damage there. These units are melting to the combination of our chain tactics. So start to shift the formation north. At this point it is strictly a cleanup operation, the city is no longer in any danger whatsoever. We have taken some casualties. But we'll be back up at full strength in Xinyi by the time Cao Cao deploys another 100,000 troop onslaught. And I think that situation is very much why extreme difficulty was introduced to the game, is if you can defend 50,000 to 100,000 against Cao Cao, a three-pronged assault without too much difficulty, the devs really need to throw something, something else at us. Well, there we are, Chao Yun's not going to be too concerned about that. Guan Yu is a bit surrounded, so he's actually taking a fair bit of damage now, 200 a turn, so we, Zhang Fei needs to get into position. I've made a blunder. Hmm. There we 
are moving everyone up. And how are we looking in the south? Ha ha ha! In June, we started in February, we're now in June, and our troops are in position. However, I did not organize the formation at all. I just right clicked, said move over there. I did not pay any attention to the actual order that they would arrive in. So I'm now, I'm now slightly panicking, thinking I must uh, get a music tower up as soon as possible to get our morale built up. But Chu Guliang, who is the one that would win this for us, is still quite a few turns away from uh, catching up to Zhu So we are in trouble. And we are on the offensive here, so these officers... If you look at Shu uh, Zi there... 1300 a troop, 1300, 1300, that's not too far off as um, the strength of all men. So I am in trouble, and again to demonstrate what it's like, we're at 86 morale down from 122, so we've lost nearly 40 morale, morale crossing the mountain paths. And Ganshi, who we know is um, had a death, her death lag activated, could die at any time. And these tiles, you can only move one province at a time unless you're in snake formation or owl formation. Okay, yeah, all looking okay there. Eugene dead, but Jiang Xia is looking very um, tasty for Xiao Yuan. So Wen Pin and Liyan are gonna scoot on back into the city. I think up here we're just going to finish on up there. So, um, Guan Yu and Xia Houdin, is this the third duel of this playthrough? Xia Houdin injured, but in some capacity, 75 strength. And I've captured him, so his whole unit get wiped out immediately. So, this really is a clean-up operation now. Dear old Zhang Hu is not long for this plane. Have we got him? Yes. So that was um, Xin Yi, very aptly defended. But what isn't defended is, or isn't going well, is the assault on Zhao Qi. Zhu Guliang is still two turns away from arriving. Zhu Xu has been cut off. There are 11,000 troops snake formation troops at that in the mountains threatening us we're at half morale we've got 800 assault 800 defense of pang tong Zhu Liang is 800 assault and no defense worth talking about huang Zhong is is dead at this point we can't rescue his unit and Zhu shu it could go in either direction So I'm thinking at this stage, I have completely failed the assault. Yeah, Huang Zhong, he's, I can't get him out of there. And he was captured, so I need to eliminate that 11,000 troop snake unit in order to get him out. However, Zhu Guliang is now in a position to use his tactic, and he has a very, very, very helpful tactic lowers all the enemy stats, gives them every single status condition, and we get a chain tactic which lowers the mor morale with Huang Yuying even further. I think if we just go back, look at that, he's full morale there, sure. and now he's, free, he's at, um, oh, what's that, 30%, 40%, we, ha we over halved his morale, which again takes a huge chunk out of his stats. Yeah, look at that, 200, 200 there, down, well, because he's computer, confused, of course, but down from his uh, 1300. We now stand a chance of rescuing Wong Chong. But can we take the city? We have 6,000 troops between us. It will be... It'll be quite something. If we can. And now we have Jian Ling at max capacity. All systems go. So 
so we have no confidants worth using. So I'm just going to deploy everyone as is. Chiang Wan's going to be our siege unit. Wei Yan, of course, our frontliner. Sai Mao, our archer. Zhu Sheng, our frontliner. Do I give a Fa Cheng disorder? Yeah, I do. Because Fa Cheng's unique tactic can't be used against cities, but disorder can. So if I'm going to be attacking Yang An, I want him to have a tactic that can do something. We are okay. Catapult. Rebel Blade and Disorder. And we are ready to go, so we're not going to march straight up the mountain into the city, we are going to try and surround and conquer it. Gwiling is the goal. And Lei Tong, who you might remember we uh, picked up earlier on, I'm going to send him over to the core, that is Beijing, and not the capital city of China in the modern day Beijing just to um, act as a little bit of a distraction. And Wu Yi is ours. So now we can concentrate on the south for a few turns. Can we at least get these units out? Xu Xu isn't going to be able to escape by the looks of it. Xiao Din's near death. I try my very best to save uh, Zhu Xu, but it's sadly not going to work, and he gets captured as well. So we got Huang Zhong captured and Zhu Xu captured, so this battle is now do or die. If I retreat, I lose potentially Zhu Xu and Huang Zhong, which would be an absolute disaster. Deployed Jinyi. Ah, we get you, Jin. I'd forgotten about that. And Shahu Dun seems to have healed in our prison, which is um, somewhat odd. He was near death. So you, Jin. He's he's like a siege weapon. You put you put him in ram formation. He doesn't have particularly good confidants. He has an event later on in the game, if you're playing one of the later scenarios, where he can become a confidant with you, um, Li Dian and Zhang Liao, but that occurs so late in the game, and only if you're playing as Cao Cao in a position where you can't get, you control already, you know, about half the map, it's you're never ever going to be able to realistically make use of it, which is a shame. Hmm. So I need Pang Tong to act as... Uh, our shield so Zhuge Liang can pepper them with arrows and hopefully use his tactic to um, do some heavy damage. And keep a little tongue back for now as he's not meant for battle, he's meant for to act as a distraction. So back south. Can you get in there, Pang Tong? Ah, you're not going to, but... Linked fetters. 
and Divine Stratagem. We're doing a fair bit of damage. And we have released Wang Chong as well, which is good. So this battle is now looking very much like we've um, turned the tables and we've won. However, Jiao Qi is still at 9,000 troops. Attacking the city might be out of our reach. There we are, he's retreating back in. So Yong An isn't lightly defended by any means, and they do have fortifications defending Gu Ling. But we'll see how aggressive the AI is going to be. We do outnumber them two to one. So, a little bit of extra morale for us, and again, it's only Shirzy in ring formation that we have to deal with. And she's still holding out as well, notably, hasn't succumbed to illness or old age. And we're just edging along into the territory of Yong'an to try and uh, get this. Get this squealing and get this surround and conquer attack off. So he's no longer confused, but Pang Tong is only taking 16 damage a turn. A bit more now. Another rank up. So if at any point we were to decide to allow Liu Biao to die, we could have a very powerful might or unfettered doctrine with multiple types of units at a maximum rank or close to. So I'm now always thinking in the back of my head, do I want to um, have a bit more versatility? Because I'm using Goose Formation units quite a bit now with Zhuge Liang and Huang Chong. Do I want Liu Biao to die? But the reason I am hesitant is that he has the famous trait and those are invaluable. Of course, if I can pick up a few more famous officers, then the situation changes somewhat. Wong Chong's on his way back to Ling Ling. But with the mountain path being what it was, it would take him a quarter of a year to, in, the, in order to reinforce uh, the city or the assault on the city of Goose Formation. So I'm not convinced that it will do me, do me much good, but I'm trying anyway. So we're very nearly there. Gonna attack the fort. In the south, oh look, so sure see he's sent out an officer to try and rescue his father. That is, uh, oh, that is Chu Guilion. Gets caught in an inferno. But the city has emptied itself now in an attempt to try and attack us. So this is good news. This gives us the glimmer of hope that we are going to be able to take the city. 
and Young An notably has not deployed against us, so we're smashing our way through the barricade, through the fortifications, slowly creeping closer to that core province they have ever so tightly defended. Oof, that's annoying. Iron Wall, Pang Tong, he, he has a thousand troops left, so every single troop that dies is impactful. So we're making our way there. I figured if he's going to give me a core area for it, it would actually be worth releasing him in this scenario, but he won't. So Chugo Leong's nearly there in position. If I can get everyone there, pepper that guy with arrows. Fortunately, Pang Tong's tactic activated. We may still have a chance. No, that's, that's ridiculous. I'll take too many turns, so I'm going to have Zhu Sheng attack the wall. Hopefully, open up a gap, and then the siege weapon can. Uh, make its way over to uh, the core province I've been desperately trying to snake around to. There we are, there's a chunk of morale gone. I'm going to use my tactic to save Pang Tong's few precious troops, but now we are really hammering him. Okay, we are very, very nearly there. And I might actually be able to make it to Wheeling in one move. Whereas Wei Yan and Liu Pan are just guard, standing guard, making sure we have a front line should. Liu Chang deploy for us. Now, I realise when Huang Chang arrives, he has snake formation. The game is telling me I can get through that pass in 45 days, four and a half turns. So, Huang Chang can now come flying down the mountain to our rescue. However, Sun Chuan, having seen that Jiao Qi is weakened, has his own uh, designs for me, so it's all uh, picking up pace. See, I'm, de I'm uh, reinforcing Ling Ling just in the off chance that I am going to have to, sadly, send a second assault out. And Jiang Wan gets squealing. And this is what I have been waiting for. The entire city and its surrounding provinces are mine. So not only does this give me an immense boost to my stats when attacking the city, and will it leave um, Liu Chang's officers very weak if he chooses to defend, but as soon as I've taken Yong'an, it will be at full capacity, ready to pump out troops, ready to act as another city of immediate recruitment. So the snowball effect on that is immense. So I'm just getting everyone in order. Jiang Cho is um, emptied. So now we can finally build our music tower to increase our morale back up. As we have to attack the city as Sun Chen's deployed for us, we cannot just walk back and hope to assault it next time as we will 
Wu sure sees officers to Sanchuan. And Huang Chong there will come and reinforce us. So we are lining up for the assault. Oh. Speaking of which, I forgot to uh, pay attention to our eastern flank. Yu Jin is attacking us yet again. I've got two water warlords in this city, so they should be okay. Plot twist, they are not going to be okay, but we'll leave that uh, I'll leave that for a little bit later on. 30,000 troops versus 6,000. Not my best uh, tactical move. It's all swamp land, so there's no music tower we can build, so we're just going to have to deploy. The plan is to use Wenpin and Lian as a flank to uh, sweep in and cut off Yu Jin's assault on Chai Sang, which would work. Well, the only reason it wouldn't work is if I stopped paying attention because I was distracted of one of two uh, other assaults elsewhere. Okay, and here we go. So this is the effect of surround and conquer. We are, even with their strongest unit, we are taking three to one favorable trades and we outnumber them. So they are facing what will only be described as absolute annihilation. So our music tower is back up and we're going to hopefully, or oh, up for the first time, hopefully recover a bit of mor morale before uh, we attack for the city. Big chunk of damage there. And now with our arrow formation officers in position as well. Ah, Liu Pan, you can't survive this. Captured at least, and then the rally for the rally tactic activates right away and boosts our morale back up. And defeating these units is recovering uh, Liu Pan's morale regardless. So Yong An, we have wiped out their defence, taking very minimal casualties. So not only. Are we going to take the city, be able to recruit from it, but we can launch an attack with our almost full strength forces down to uh, Jiangzhou, I believe that city is called, down the mountain path. But more importantly, Huang Chong has arrived. So this was a slaughter, and not with top tier officers as well, mind you. 
This isn't Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, and Zhao Yu. No, this is Tsai Mao. This is Yu Chu Sheng. This is Fa Cheng. This is Liu Pan. Jing Province nobodies. Oh boy, do I need some food. So, that's exactly what we do. We spend over 20 or over 10,000 gold, 14,000 to be precise, so that we may reinforce uh, Jian Ling with as much food as it will need. And I'm checking on Ling Ling, we've got plenty of food because our deployment was small, the food consumption was in itself quite small, which is what made it manageable. Okay, so my plan is, if I can move within proximity of Jiao Qi, use divine strategies and guard bow, hopefully I can uh, burst the city down quite quickly. And even though uh, Huang Chong's snake formation is terrible at damaging troops inside the city, if and is very weak in terms of its defense, if the city is disordered, we got nothing to worry about. So move these guys up. And of course, I've completely forgot about Chai Sang during all of that. And we did a fair bit of damage to the Eugene. But not the result we were hoping for. course there we are this was all bait of course to lure in the enemy so I can flank with Wen Pin and Lian they were certainly not sat on the riverbank doing nothing I'm just getting everyone in position slowly approaching Jiao Qi which is very difficult to do through the seven thick forests And the next turn, there goes Yang An. And we are in position to make a move for the city. You can just see to the right of your screen Sen Chuen's forces approaching us. They'll be here in two turns. They would have been here already if they hadn't stopped to build that fortress. Oh, a little bit of damage. So there's the city confused. Young and of course is ours. So all we have left to do in this episode is take the city or die trying. Now Godbow, this will do a little bit of damage to the city I'm thinking. It does 4,000 troop damage. 4,000. This is part of what makes Wang Chong the god of conquering cities. He has a longbow trait which increases the amount of damage he does to troops inside a city. He has Brave General, I believe, which increases the damage surrounding officers do to a city. And he has a direct damage tactic which does a huge chunk of troop damage. So now not only is it possible but it's looking exceptionally likely that Jiao Qi falls to us with Sun Chuen just one turn away. So we have entered Shu, just on the outskirts, but we are in Shu, and Jiang Zhou is now ours for the taking. Of course, Wu Yi had forgotten we'd hired him, otherwise he would have taken part of being part of the assault, so I'm going to send a few troops, and I'm going to tell him to enter the city once he's made it there. And using the gold that we've um, inherited from the treasury, I'm going to buy a few more supplies as well, so that we really will be able to just fly down the mountain into 12 and make a dent into Shu. Of 
course this was never going to be a major concern the uh, way naval fleet but this is what I'm most uh, most excited for Jiaochi and the city falls sure these forces are mine however wait a second there is no sure sea he was not in the city at the time of me conquering it so the best aspect of sure sea's force which is sure sea himself will not be joining me he's gone off elsewhere likely into sun chuen's force and room so here i am absolutely baffled as to why he's not here he might have been out negotiating with somebody, gifting, God knows what, but he's not there. So, <sighs> tragic outcome. But we are now in 2012. Oh, Ganshi, Ganshi, can I just say, she waited until, waited until the very next turn after I had taken the city to die. I lose a thousand troops, but without her there, we would not have been able to secure the city. So she really, really, really um, did us proud there. Died not a turn too soon. And I double check and I see that there is, there is no, there is no Shirsi. I've only got his whole extended family. So I'm going to move Wang Chong inside, I'm going to have Zhu Ge Liang stay on the outside to defend the city and Sun Quan's forces will unfortunately need to be turned away as they will, they'll not be able to, they'll not be able to threaten us. So I'm looking here for Shirsi, thinking where are you, because he's, and he has immediately joined Sun Quan, which is beyond frustrating. So we're now going to have to conquer Sun Quan, Sun Chuen to get Shirsi, even though I really wanted Shirsi due to his famous trait. Can't get everything your way though. Notably, I am now one of two cities away from uh, ranking up again, I think, if I've got the right percentage of the map, as Jiaoxi and the city immediately to the east of it forms the province. Yeah, so we're just going to burn through these troops here. Divine strategy to min mitigate the damage I'll be taking. Plague isn't the best uh, event to be taking place in Jiaoxi shortly after I took it with very few troops remaining, but uh, such is life. I'm just going to send Pang Tong out to ensure that this unit dies and does not get away. So the Wu fleet deployed for Lu Jiang due to Cao Cao emptying Lu Jiang to assault Chai Sang. This freeway conflict playing out very well. But now um, Cao Cao is evading Jian Yi from the north. This won't be anything to worry about. Jian Yi, of course, full capacity until Cao Cao's next 100,000 man invasion. Yong An looking incredibly healthy. And in the next video, I think we really are going to be able to uh, accelerate our assault into Shu.
Uh, so I just need to move a few officers around as I need to fill out Jiaochi. Which I should be able to do with these um, Shi family officers. And just so you can see there, he has no chance of escaping. Hoang guy is coming for us, but I don't think he's going to decide to launch against the city with 4,500 troops. We'll see, of course. Continuing to throw all my gold away. To the point where Chai Sang, where Liu, ba, Liu Bia, Liu Bia, Liu Bia is situated, has no more gold until the next turn. But we now have a nice light blue Jing province in its entirety, including Yongan, which I think complements the borders very well. So much like Liu Bei as he entered Shu, I think we are going to be able to make quite quick work of um, Zhang, oh, of Liu Zhang. He's move, making the move against Cao Cao, but if Cao Cao has any competent officers in Han Chong, he's got nothing to worry about. And the southern uh, seven part of Shu province is completely undeveloped. Well, Jianning is is developed, but it's undermanned, and Chengdu is empty. So I think we can be quite confident. Um, I hope this recording has gone okay. I usually wrap up my guides before now, but I think we, I'm going to go. Oh, there we are. From the uh, from the uh, east to the west, and then make a plunge into south south before I do. So, um, thank you. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the next one.